Rogers with Livingston and Ted Jellard too and our host Fitz and Lando and he brings it to you <laughs> Creature Features and all creatures and on the 29th day of January was born a child in Derby, Pennsylvania named William Claude Dukenfield. As this child grew into his teens, he had a volatile relationship with his short-tempered father and he ran away from home frequently. After taking many odd jobs in his youth, he used his juggling skills to become a vaudeville performer and eventually made his way onto the silver screen using the nom de plume W.C. Fields. Welcome to Creature Features! The lovely lass with the lively lashes would be my tempestuous tenant, Tangella. The rather tall bloke to this side would be my loyal and level-headed home administrator, Mr. Livingston. And I, of course, am your enthusiastic curator of the macabre and your host, Vincent. Have we a wonderful show for you? What? Nothing. Nothing at all. My purpose in citing the early life of W.C. Fields is because tonight we will be joined by his grandson, Ronald Fields. This amazing chap wrote the book on his famous grandpapa. In fact, he even wrote three books about him. He'll tell us about the incredible life of this Hollywood icon and chime in about tonight's film, which is 1941's Topo Returns, a very humorous ghost story that will leave you in stitches. Livingston, I never understood the significance of the saying, leave you in stitches. It is simply an old idiom playing off similar idioms, much like to die laughing or split one's sides. Hmm. Unless, of course, it is a reference to an altercation with Ms. Tangella. In that case, it literally means you will encounter a doctor with a needle and suture. Right. In any case, don't touch the channel button on your remote, for it is to be another night of ghostly vaudeville frights right here on Creature Features. I sense the possibility that you may perhaps have obtained from her a bit of acrimony. Stay tuned. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Welcome to Creature Features. It's that time of the week that I love, you love, everybody loves, and even Ronald Fields, I think, loves it a little bit because he's our guest tonight. Ronald Fields, welcome. Thank you so much, Vincent. You are the descendant of W.C. Fields. Yes. For and, you know, I can see the family resemblance <laughs> a bit. I mean, you have a much better nose than <laughs> yeah, you do, Thank I think. you. Much better nose. <laughs> thank but, you. Uh, you know, I think the top hat and a cigar, and you might be able to pull it off. Yeah. Can you do the voice? No. I'm terrible. I, I wouldn't blame you. I, I wouldn't know. blame you. So you came all the way up from where? From the Monterey Bay. I love Monterey. That's yeah, beautiful. Monterey Bay to Bodega Bay. Oh, yes. Monterey. Carmel. Carmel, yeah. One of my favorite places, that whole area. Everyone is so nice as well. So how was the trip up? It was. T I, would, <laughs> I would have flown had I known the ride would have been so long. But it was, it was nice. It was, you, you know. Like you fly? You like not anymore, I guess. No. <laughs> Right. Well, I suppose you could still fly. 
if you'd like commission a plane, right? No, no, I wouldn't get in the plane now. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that's a nice trip because you could take one all the way Yeah, up, right? but they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but at some point you have to go through San Francisco. Anyways, we're talking geography that many of you may not know anything about, but this is like West Coast stuff. So, well, we are so happy to have you here tonight. We're going to talk about you. We're going to talk about your grandpapa and uh, so many things you've done. You've even won an Emmy, I understand. Yes, I won an Emmy. It was a big surprise for W.C. Field Straight Up. I produced it and uh, wrote, co-wrote it. So you're an author, producer, and wonderful chap, and a guest on Creature Features tonight. So we're going to watch Topo Returns. Have you seen this film? Yes, I have. Oh, good. I have not, but I've seen little pieces, and I know I'm going to love it, so it's going to be a fun time for everybody. Yes, it will be. So you stay with us. You guys definitely stay with us, and we're going to be right back after the first segment of Topo Returns. See you soon. You all right down there? <whistles> Stay where you are. Don't move. Keep calm. Don't get excited. I'll get you out of there right away. Just keep calm. Now, wait a minute. What did we hit? Well, nothing. We had a blowout. I don't understand it either. There was a brand new tire this morning. What's the matter? Are you sure you're all right? Oh, I'm a little shaky, I guess. Come on, we can sit down over here. What am I? An orphan? Come on. Any man that drives as fast as you do ought to be run out of this country. Well, you tell me all about it sometime. Thanks for the lift, buddy. Oh. Say, I'm awfully sorry about all this. You're sorry? How about us? We can't stay here all night. Well, you won't have to. I said I'd get you to Carrington Hall, and I will. How? You gonna fly us there on a broom? Oh, get help. We passed a garage about two miles back. Now, you take it easy and don't worry about a thing. I'll be back in a flash with a tow car. Why, it's as simple as falling off a log. Huh. Comfortable? Well, don't go away now. Must have been his wife with him. Uh-oh! Danger ahead! Two of them! Oh, 
Oh, thank you. It was awfully sweet of you to stop for us. But I... Annie, I'm, I'm, you get I'm, me back to you, Tom. Huh? Can you manage the bags? Yes, I think so. Oh, there. Here are mine. There. Now, okay. mind if I sit on your lap? Oh, well, really, my dear young oh, lady. Well, I'm awfully sorry to inconvenience you, but we had a blowout. Ah, oh, this is comfortable. Well, what are we waiting for? Oh, very well, Eddie. Drive on. Yes, sir. Would you mind telling me where you ladies are taking me? To the Carrington estate. Uh-oh. Is there anything wrong with the Carrington place? Yes, ma'am. If there wasn't anybody living there, it'd be a haunted house. My, my, Cosmo's late. He's usually home by now. Oh, my, it's chilly, isn't it? Emily, remind me to send this coat back. It doesn't keep me warm at all. Mrs. Topper, you I... haven't got it on. Oh, how oh, oh, silly of me. My, it's strange how it's usually cold in the winter and warm in summer, isn't it? Oh, there's Cosmo now. Ah! Oh, look, someone's waving to us. It's a lady. It's worse than that, boss. It's Mrs. Topper. Emily, look! He's got a carload of women. And one of them, one of them sitting on his lap. Oh, my Emily! Are you sure this is the Carrington place? Yes, yeah, that's what they call it. Cheerful little eyeful, isn't it? Thanks for the lift, Mr. Topper. Don't mention it. Hurry up with those bags, Eddie. Yes, sir. I ain't wasting no time around here. I'd like to invite you in, but... Oh, no, thanks. That's very much. We've got to be getting home. We sure do. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Good evening. Why don't you knock before you come out? I'm the butler, Miss Carrington. Oh, I'm not Miss Carrington. There she is. How do you do? Won't you please step in? Yes. I'm Lily and the housekeeper. Oh, how do you do? This is my friend, Miss Richards. Howdy. Your father's waiting, miss. Thank you. Would you mind waiting here? This way, please. One moment, please. Miss Carrington? This is Dr. Jerry's, your father's physician. How do you do, Dr. Jarris? I'd like a few words with you, Miss Carrington, before you see your father. Of course. I'll be as brief as possible. Your father's far from being a well man, Miss Carrington. Yes, I know. Seeing you for the first time may be something of a shock to him. I think I understand, Doctor. He's been looking forward to your arrival with great eagerness. I hope there'll never be any occasion for you to be separated from him again. Come with me, please. Your daughter. And 
I... I don't know quite what to do or say. Nor do I. Except to tell you... Anne, you're beautiful. You're the image of her mother when she was young. Uh, 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 perhaps we'd better sit down. Yes. I... I know you must think it very strange. Seeing your own father for the first time. On the eve of your 21st birthday. Well, naturally, I've wondered why you never sent for me. Your mother loved the Far East, Anne. Her last wish was that you be brought up in the land she loved so well. Oh, I've wanted to send for you many times, but I had to respect your mother's wishes. And, of course, my own health wouldn't permit me to visit you. I understand, Father. I hope we had a pleasant trip. Yes, we... we had a wonderful trip. We? Oh, I brought a friend along with me. An American girl named Gail Richards. Her father's the head of an exporting company in Shanghai. Richards, you say? Mm-hmm. Why, oh, I, I hope you don't mind my bringing her. Of course not. Besides, the house belongs to you now. No, Father. To us. No, my dear. By the terms of your mother's will, everything belongs to you after tomorrow. What else do you do around here besides wine clock? Been here long? Twenty years. Twenty years. Mm -hmm. Looks like it might turn out to be a steady job, huh? <laughs> Your mother wanted you to have these, and they're exactly as she wore them 20 years ago. Oh, Dad, they're... they're beautiful. <laughs> they look every bit as beautiful upon you as they did upon your mother. Dad, I... I never did know just how Mother died. Some sort of an accident, wasn't it? Uh, yes, dear. A mine cave in. I met your mother in Singapore. After you were born, we decided to move to Sumatra, where I had an interest in a tungsten mine. My partner was a man named Walter Harburg. Uh, one day, he was showing your mother through the mine, when suddenly there was an earthquake. The tunnel collapsed. You've talked enough, Mr. Carrington. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we mustn't tire your father. Oh, of course not. I hope you'll like your room, dear. Oh, I'm sure I will. Lillian will show you where it is. I, I'm supposed to conserve my strength. It's quite all right, Father. Good night, darling. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good night, Dr. Jarrett. Good night, Miss Carrington. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to Creature Features. We are still watching 1941's Topper Returns with the wonderful and amazing Ron Fields, son, grandson of W.C. Fields. You were telling me during the break that Roland Young, the star of this film, once performed with your grandpapa. Yes, it was, it was in David Copperfield. David O. Selznick was the uh, producer. Uh, George Cooker was the director. Right. And they spent all oodles of money on this movie and they got Roland Young to play Uriah Heep. The movie was David Copperfield, The Life and Times of David Copperfield. And we're not talking about the bloke at Vegas. No, <laughs> no, right. no, no. This is, this is a, a Charles Dickens um, book. Right. And so Fields and Roland Young got along very famously in the movie. Roland Young played the, the bad guy. W.C. was the good guy, Wilkins Macabre, 
who Charles Dickens wrote the character Wilkins Macabre based on his own father. So it's an autobiographical in a way. Um, Roland Young was the bad guy. He was Uriah Heep who was stealing money from the good guy. Right. And W.C. finds him out. And uh, they, they, they became very famous, very close friends. W.C. had a group of people, including John Barrymore, who used to meet on Bundy Boulevard in Los Angeles. And they called it the Bundy Bunch. Bundy as in, like, Brentwood? Yes. I used to live in Brentwood. Oh, did you? Yeah. I knew Bundy well. Yes, Bundy, yeah. yeah. And Roland Young was part of that group. So they were very close friends. Oh, wonderful. Now, you said W.C. played the good guy in this film. Yes, Welcomes Macabre. You know, I was always under the impression that he played, like, the bad guy. You know, stealing from children and well, one, the insults. One of the things W.C. Fields said about his own character was... If the, the audience will forgive a rogue as long as he sa- shows one scintilla of human kindness. Interesting. And every W.C. Fields film, he shows that scintilla of human kindness. So he comes out as a lovable rogue. Right. You know. Right. But not so much with children. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Some of the funniest scenes I've seen is him interacting with children. I was watching a clip the other night, knowing you were coming, of... Him with this small, most brattiest child I'd ever seen. She's talking very loud and singing. (laughs) And I think he literally kicked her. (laughs) Yes, he did. He kicked a number of kids in his movies. You know, I I might have done the same thing myself. I know. (laughs) No, it's a possibility. He said the same thing. He said anyone who, uh, there's not a man alive who didn't want to kick a kid (laughs) at least once in his life for bratty behavior. I'm not proud to say it, but it's, it's, it's quite a true story. It's sometimes, you know. Children need to be guided yes. with a very soft kick, yes. very soft. So you were born after W.C. passed, right? Yes, yes. So you never actually got to meet him. I never met him, but I, I heard so many funny stories from my mother particularly. He liked his mother. His wife, w, w, my grandmother, Hattie, right. was estranged from W.C. since 1906. And it may have been an estrangement that was created by Hattie had my father and herself baptized to Catholicism, and W.C. hated religion. Oh, wow. Religion of all kinds. So um, uh, uh, my father, W.C. Fields Jr., was, uh, and my brother, my oldest brother, W.C. Fields III, but no one goes, they always go by Bill. Right. My, old, my father went by Claude, W. Claude. Because it was William Claude. Yes. Right. right. So um, they... they they had a bad relationship, my father and my grandmother. It wasn't good. Near the end of my father, my grandfather's life, my father and he started getting together closer. But he loved my mother. And every one of his movies, you can see, if he has a son, the son's a jerk. If he has a daughter, the daughter... Well, W.C. once wrote a letter to, to Hattie saying, you know, the, you, you've, you've messed up my son's brain. You're, you've... you've, you've Oh, you know, and he says, had we had a daughter, she would have seen through your perfidy, Hattie. Oh, my goodness. And so in his movies, I call, I call my film book a life on film. In his movies, he put his own angst, his own, oh, the things that bothered him in right. the world and put him on film. On the screen. And so all his daughters are just wonderful, and that's the way he treated my mother. That is interesting. Yeah. My goodness. All right, I'm getting the signal we're going to get back to this film, but when we come back, we're going to learn about this book you've written. Or it's more than one, right? Yes. All right, we're going to take a look at your books, but first let's get back to Topper Returns and find out what happens next. You guys stay with us. Where's Miss Richards? Here I am, pal. Well, I don't know. That was rather a close call. Close? Six more inches and we'd all be singing Annie doesn't live here anymore. How could such a thing happen? Please, Mr. Carrington, you mustn't excite yourself. I think you'd better show the young ladies to their rooms. Yeah, pick us a couple without chandeliers, will you? This way, please. Thanks, old boy. Look, 
The Chinese room will be yours, Miss Richards. Oh, you're a doll. Well, this is just dandy. I traveled 7,000 miles to get away from China, and here I am with everything but a bowl of rice. What's that sound? It's the waves, angry waves. Day after day, night after night, they beat with savage fury against the black rocks below. For 20 years, they've been calling, calling, calling to someone who never answers. Just like the pot of gold program. Will that be all, miss? No, I'm starved. You forgot we didn't have any dinner. Rama will bring you a tray. Oh, any little thing will do. Lobster, salad, and beer, but nothing heavy. Anything for you, Miss Carrington? No, thank you, Rama. I'm going to bed, Gail. I'm all in. I'm kind of baggy myself. <laughs> Good night, Miss Richards. Good night. I hope you rest in peace. Thank you. Isn't that what they write on tombstones? Oh, don't be silly. Go on to bed. Good night, darling. Your father had this room done especially for you. Lovely. Very sorry, miss, but we have no beer. I brought you some wine. Wine? Why, that champagne! Yes, miss. Oh, put it down, buddy. Will there be anything else, oh, miss? Oh, that's all, thank you. Champagne? Why hide it? I... <laughs> you? Yes, it's me. Well, open up and let me in. <whistles> Gee, where's the glass slipper that goes with it? It is nice, isn't it? Oh, nice. It's heaven compared to that Chinese torture chamber I'm in. Gee, what a layout. Oh, this is for me. I've always wanted to sleep in one of these covered wagons. It's almost too nice to sleep in. Say, what do you have to do to get a bed like this? Rub a magic lamp or something? You really like this room, don't you? Ah, oh, this is right up my alley. Oh, to catch measles and have to stay in a bed like this. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to bed. For tonight, darling, this room is yours. Oh, no, you don't. I wouldn't dream of letting you do anything like that. But it's a deal. <laughs> anything to keep out of China. Good night, Cinderella. Good night, pal. And I do mean pal. <laughs> Say, uh, lock your door in case Lady Frankenstein walks in her sleep. Come in. Did you wish anything, Doctor? Are the young ladies comfortable? Quite. That will be all, then. I don't mind if I do.
all right for a schoolboy, but... Kara, I've told you repeatedly and incessantly, when I could get a word in edgewise, that the whole thing was no fault of mine. I think it's ridiculous for a man of your age to pursue young girls. What will the neighbors think? I didn't pursue them, Kara. They forced themselves on me. Oh, don't be absurd. Imagine girls, pretty girls, forcing themselves on a paunchy middle-aged man. Well, I don't think I'm paunchy. Don't try to change the subject. At least you might have waved to me when you went by. I've explained that, darling. I couldn't. That girl was sitting on my lap. Oh, I know she was. I warn you, Cosmo, if ever you do a thing like this again, I'm going back to Marble. Karen, of course I don't intend to do a thing like that again. Besides, I... I couldn't very well have sat on her lap, could I? Cosmo, this is hardly the time for jokes. That's peculiar. I don't think it's so peculiar. After all, we've been married for 20 years, and I have a perfect right to be treated like a wife who... who has been married for 20 years. That's odd. It's not odd at all. Cosmo, do you realize what you're saying? Uh. I beg your pardon, dear one. Well, if that's all the attention you're going to give me, I may as well go to bed. Good night. Well, I might be a little overweight, but I'm certainly not paunchy. In fact, I'm in pretty good shape for the shape I'm in. After all, I'm a banker, not a glamour boy. your cold feet off my back. You don't need all the covers, do you? Here I am, Toppy. Remember me, the girl that sat on your lap? Oh, this is terrible. What's terrible? You're a ghost. You're dead. No kidding. Okay, you've got to get out of here. I've had enough trouble with your kind of people. Well, it's strange I should be dead. I was young and healthy, and I felt swell when I went to bed. So why did I die? I don't know, but you can't stay here. You've got to go back to the Carrington house. Cosmo! There, you see? Cosmo! Quick, do something. Vanish. Well, all right, Toppy. Here I go. Oh, oh it's you, dear. <laughs> Cosmo, who on earth were you talking to? Nobody, dear. Um, nobody. Uh, I was just talking in my sleep, you know. Talking in your sleep? Uh, but that's such a waste of time. Besides, nobody can hear you. Oh, well, I'm not so sure about that. Cosmo, I, I'm sorry I was so mean. I know you'd tell me if there was anything between you and that girl. Let, let's forget all about her. Well, I'd like to, dear, but under the circumstances, I'm afraid I can't. Oh, well, of course, if that's the way you feel about it, I'll talk to you in the morning, when you're sober. Why don't you look where you're going? Why don't you be where you are? Now see what you've done. That's nothing compared to what I'm going to do if you don't come with me. Come with you? Where? Back to the Carrington house. I'm curious to know what happened to me. Go ahead. Oh, no. No, I couldn't go alone, I'm afraid. I don't like that house. It's spooky. I won't go. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. Get out of my bed. I won't, not unless you come with me. You get out of my bed or I'll tell Mrs. Topper. What did you tell her? I'll tell her you're in my bed. I... Oh, no, I... Oh, I can't very well tell her that. Not very well. But I can. Oh, but you wouldn't do that. Mrs. Topper wouldn't understand. Are you coming with me or not? I can't. All right, then. I'll give you three to make up your mind and then I'll scream. Oh. One, two... Oh. Oh. No, no, no. Please, please don't. All right, you win. Now, what do you want me to do now? Call your chauffeur and tell him to take us to the Carrington house. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Feature. Not now. Stay tuned.
This portion of Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. Uh, Mr. Fields stepped away. To, I think he had to go get a drink or something. I thought you'd normally bring him drinks. I think he had to go to the WC. Oh, the WC Fields. I like that. Anyways, uh, we're going to do letters because uh, this is a good time to do letters, right? Right? Right. 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 Let's do letters. How you doing, Miss Tangella? You know, if you keep using that thing as a weapon, he's going to take it from you. He most certainly will. It might disappear one day. He will, right. Oh, my goodness. You gave me a novel, Mr. Livingston. A novelette. It's a novel. All right, here we go. This is from Morris Sparkle. Is that a real name? Sparkle? This is California. All right. Well, he doesn't say where he's from, so we don't know. All right, Dear Creature Features, cast and staff. Who, when they say cast, who do they speak of? You, I imagine. Is it just, no, I'm the presenter. All right. I've greatly enjoyed watching your shows via YouTube since I've been spending so much more time at home during the last number of months. It is due to recent world events and not due to court mandates, I can assure you. Unfortunately, CF is not available here in the Portland area through our local TV stations, so please consider branching out to the Northwest. CEF on a regular basis on the biggest screens would be a welcome addition to the Keeping Portland Weird motto. Is that what they say up there? Yes. Portland Weird. Nice. I like that. I would like to request less dull as hell B&W films. That's black and white, right? B &W. Yes. B&W. And moving more into the color world of the 70s, I would highly recommend Captain Kronos Vampire Hunter. Vincent, you would enjoy the accents. Or the Norlis tapes both of which should be within the very modest budget zone. Also, they are actually a bit scary, which would be a welcome change. Your humble fan, Morris Sparkle. P.S. If you do screen either movie, whenever the CF cast is in Portland, we'll take you to the best bars. All right, so a couple of things here. Uh, more stations. You need to call your station in request. Creature Features. Just tell them to call us up. We set them up for free. It's nice, right? Right. They don't have to pay anything. Just, Not quite. Here are tapes. We, what do we do? Give them like reel to reel tapes or film? It's all digital. I'll explain that to you someday. All right. And then um, <clears throat> those movies, we'll see what we could do. I've heard of the Norlis tapes. I haven't heard of the other one. And uh, yes, the bars, we will go if we go to Portland. I like Portland. You know why? No. It's full of ports. Ah. Thanks for writing, Morris. And not port wine? Port wine. You know I like port wine. He knows I like port wine. You don't know I like port wine. All right. This one is from Lori Lee. L-E-I-G-H is Lee, right? All right. Yeah. And she goes, uh, hello, Vincent Tangella and Livingston. I like your show, but it seems like the movies are so corny. I guess the grade C or D is correct. I watched Crowhaven Farm on July 4th, but I remember original host Bob Wilkins slightly as a child of the 70s. That's an odd statement, but we'll go with that. Keep the cheese coming. God bless you all. Thank you, Lori Lee, established 1965. Oh, she's, she's a, she writes younger than she actually is. Thanks for writing, Lori. Last one? Last one. Last letter. <clears throat> All right, this one is from Jake Bingler in Seattle, Washington. Well, somebody from the Northwest is watching us, Morris. Hey, Vince, I used to listen to your music. It rocked. Now I watch your show. It sucks in a big way. Why don't you at least do one of your old songs each week? Your viewers will dig it, and maybe I'll keep watching your show. In a nutshell, shut up and play your guitar. An old fan from 1992, Jake Bingler. Um, I don't do music anymore, Jake. I don't like to do it. I play the pie organ now and then, but I'm finished with rock and roll. It's such a silly business. I like doing this better. And if you don't like it, don't watch it. Is that it? 
That's it. That is it for mail. If you'd like to send a note by email, send it to the address you see appearing down here. If you'd like to send something in the post, send it to the address you see down here. We'll be right back with Mr. Ronald Fields in the next segment. But first, let's get back to Topper Returns. Hello? Yes, boss. But it ain't daylight yet. Oh, you know that, huh? Yes, sir. Right away. Get going. Yes, sir. Where to, Mr. Topper? The Carrington place. Pardon me, boss, but could I sort of inquire what we're going over to the Carrington place for? To look for a body. You better look for one for me, too, because the one I'm using now is now. Come on, Eddie, you want to help me, you know? With, with what, boss? With the body. The body. Okay, I'll go with you, but kind of keep to one side, because I got a feeling some running's going to be done. Toppy, that's the bedroom I was in, the one with the balcony. How are we going to get in? Through the window. I got up to close a window. There's the window. And then I started back to bed, and, and that's all I remember. Oh, my gosh, there I am. Look, right by the window. This is positively horrible. You've been stabbed. Stabbed? This is no time for champagne. Oh, but Toppy. It isn't every day a girl gets murdered. Look at me. Oh. Oh, please, please, please. Because this is serious. We've got to call the police. Yes. I want to find out who did this to me. Where's the telephone? Downstairs. All right.
No. Operator. 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 This thing's dead. Mmm, an epidemic. Where are you? Here I am, sweetie. Huh? You can't seem to get anybody. Maybe the wires have been cut. I'll trace them. Operator. Operator. Put down that phone. Stay where you are. Uh, your phone's out of order. Who are you? Oh, me? I'm, I'm Cosmo Topper. I, I, I'm your next door neighbor. N n nice place you've got here. Very nice. I, I, I just dropped in to use the phone. At 12.30 in the morning. Oh, is it really as late as that? Well, I must be going. No, I mustn't. Who are you calling? The, the, the police. There's, there's been a murder here. Don't look at me like that. I, I didn't kill the girl. What on earth are you people doing? I found this man prowling about the house. But this, this gentleman says there's been a murder. What are you talking about? If you don't believe me, go and see for yourself. It's in that big room at the top of the stairs. Why? Why, that's Anne's room. Go on. Anne! Where is she? Right over there, by the window. Where? Where? There's no one here. I saw it here a few minutes ago with my own eyes. Father, what's the matter? Anne, you're safe. You're all right. Well, of course I am. Oh. Why? Why, Miss Carrington, this gentleman has just been telling us that you'd been murdered. Well, Mr. Topper, what, whatever gave you that idea? No, it's not you, it's the other girl. I saw her a moment ago, now really, I did. Where is Gail? She wasn't downstairs, was she? Of course not. How could she be downstairs when she was murdered up here? Now, Mr. Topper, please control yourself. I think I found something that might explain matters. It's addressed to Miss Carrington. Darling, sorry to run out on you so mysteriously. We'll explain everything when I get back. Love, Gail. Mr. Topper is evidently suffering from hallucinations. Mr. Topper, how old a man are you? Forty-six. Oh, just as I thought. What do you mean, just as you thought? Schizophrenia. Schizophrenia, nothing. I came here in my car. Your car? I... Uh, yes. It's right outside now, waiting for me. you'd expect for this type of man. I've lost the body, I've lost my car. If I don't get out of here very soon, I'll lose my mind. You know, what he needs more than anything else is rest. Well, when he feels better, we'll send him home in my car. And dear, you'd better go to bed. Good night, Mr. Topper. Good well, night. Mr. Topper, Gail's disappearance has me worried. Well, look what it's done to me. Well, where did you last see her? She was sitting on a table in the hall and she hung my hat on her foot. 
Just take it easy, Mr. Topper, and Carl will be along in a few minutes. Portions of this program are sponsored by DoorTank, distributor of quality commercial doors nationwide. Welcome back to Creature Features. If you are just now joining us, we are watching Topper Returns with Ronald Fields, who is the grandson of W.C. Fields. And you've written books, and yes. we're going to talk about this in a moment. But first, this film, that effect where the ghost woman walks off into the clouds, that was pretty well done for 1941. Oh, throughout the movie, they have tremendous effects. But that was the most beautiful, I right. think, is when she opens the, the window, she's a ghost. Right. The sky is beautiful with right. clouds on it, and she looks like she's just walking on the clouds without breaking. Imagine if this film had been done in color. Jeez, it would have been yes, nice. Would have they been. would have done, you know, nice blue. Yeah. Who knows? Anyways, we're not here to talk about that film. We're here <laughs> to talk about this book, W.C. Fields by himself. You wrote this. You wrote all these words. Yes, not all the words. A lot of it is W.C.'s papers, scripts, letters. Still, though, this yeah. is an amazing. This is like a small phone book for a small community. There must be a lot of information here. Well, there is. It really. Uh, they kept so much information. They, meaning WC's family and his WC's wife and right. WC and my father, that they cover his life. It's a, it's a almost an autobiography. They cover his life from. We have photographs of WC at five years old. That's 1885. My goodness. Yeah. Photographs were not too common back then. No. Forward by Conan O'Brien, the Conan O'Brien. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. This is the new re-release of my first book. Came out in 1973. They re-released it in fabulous. 2017. And there's photos. It looks like some artwork. Yeah, W.C. drew those himself. He was a oh, tremendously goodness. talented this fellow. This is wonderful. So how long did it take you to write this book? Um, about two to three years that's all yeah i was that's i was a putting large book for two to three yeah years. i know i was putting it together a lot well i was work. you know it was a job i'd get up right. you know work from nine to five you know it was, it was i couldn't get it i was fired from every single job i had since i was a paper boy now no one fires a paper boy no but i i got fired as a paper boy so i had to become a writer so this was my introduction you know, to... I had a similar thing with music, and I, yeah. I know exactly what you yeah. speak of. <laughs> you need to be your own boss. That's yeah. what it is. You're, yeah. you're a born leader. Yeah. <laughs> so this book, what's this one? This one was my film book. came out in the 70s, mid-70s. Uh, mid and this is... You're covering Actually, his films, I'm not sorry. his life. This is yes. his life. This is his films. And oh, this one's got lots of photographs. Yes, and we have photographs of Roland Young in there. Uh, doing playing a who's Uriah, in this film? Yes, oh, playing wonderful. Uriah Heep in the David Copperfield film. Oh my goodness, this man's how many films did W. C. Fields do? Fifty-three. Fifty-three films, including there's That's four a lot of films. Yeah, four shorts and oh, my goodness. Yeah. Well, yeah, at a time when Hollywood was not at full speed. Well, he started out in New York at Astoria Studios, which later became Paramount. Oh, so, wonderful. so he started out in New York City making his films there. And then D.W. Griffith, he worked for D.W. Griffith for many years, for right. two films, I'm sorry, not many years, but two right. films. And then uh, D.W. Griffith was pretty much the founder of Hollywood. He, of course. They wanted a year-round right. place to film. That's fantastic. All right, well, let's say we get back to this movie and we come back, we're gonna talk about your documentary okay. on W.C. Fields Thank and you. maybe take a look at a real Emmy. I've never seen one before. <laughs> All right, you guys stay with us. We will be back shortly. See you soon. Oh, you 
remember me? Yes, of course, but what are you doing here? Oh, well, I hate to be commercial, lady, but somebody owes me $26.80. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry I forgot. You also forgot to say goodbye. It was a cute disappearing act you and your partner pulled. You, you didn't by chance see her? You didn't pass her on the road? No. What is she, sleepwalker? I don't know, but she's gone. Oh, disappeared again. Say, she must have been raised in a magician's hat. I'll get your money for you. Oh, what's the matter? Anything wrong? I hate to go up those stairs. Would you mind coming with me? Upstairs? With you? Mm-hmm. I'd better come back in the morning. Oh, please, won't you come? Say, are you in a jam or something? <laughs> Just nervous, I guess. Nervous? Why? Well, I can't explain, but... Well, things have been happening, and... Well, you can stop worrying, honey. Nothing's gonna happen to you. Come on. I'd hate to pay the light bill in the joint like this. Oh, this is my room. Well, if you don't mind, uh, I'll just wait here. on here? Who's that guy in the black coat? What happened to her? Who are you? Uh, I'm the housekeeper. Fine way to keep house. Women screaming, boogeymen jumping out of windows. If I had a house like this, I wouldn't want to keep it. Miss Carrington. Miss Carrington. Miss Carrington. What's going on here? I just said that. Who are you? And don't tell me you're this girl's rich uncle. Oh, don't be silly. I'm her father. Well, that's close enough. Anne. Anne. She's fainted. I'll bet you the first thing she says when she opens her eyes is, where am I? What happened? Say, what are you doing here? All right, so I'll explain it to you. This young lady owes me for a taxi cab ride. I came here to collect it. She asked me up to this room. I heard her scream and walked into the middle of an Orson Welles broadcast. A man was standing over me with a knife. There it is, there. Yeah. Where did you get that knife? Oh, I found it out of the window in the next room. Perhaps Topper's story was right. He said they'd murdered the other girl. Now they've tried to murder Anne. Rama, call the police. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. You don't think I had anything to do with this? Well, do you? Why, certainly not. And uh, you'd better get your clothes on. I'm afraid you're going to remain here, young man. But good heavens, why should anybody want to kill Miss Carrington? Well, they killed me, didn't they? Yes, I can understand that. But Miss Carrington... Oh, don't worry about her anymore. She's got a nice, handsome bodyguard. He's a taxi driver. Maybe he's the one that's doing all the killing. Nonsense. He didn't bring his cab in the house with him. Well, then, if she's safe, there's no reason for me to stay. Good night. I've had a lovely time. Oh, Toppy, don't run out now. We've got to find out who killed me. Then we'll know who's threatening Anne. Yes, but I don't want my wife threatening me, you see, and she will if she finds out. No, I'm going home. Oh. Madame, I'm quite sure you're mistaken. I'm not mistaken. I know I'm not. I'm Mrs. Tupper, aren't I, Edward? Yes, ma'am, but I don't think that's what the gentleman means. I certainly do know what I mean, don't I? Frankly, madame, I don't know. Well, who does? What do you say we start from the beginning? That's a good idea. Yeah. Where is my husband? But, madame, I don't know. This is a private home. Private? It looks more like a parade ground. Can I help you? You certainly can. Do you live here? Yes, I do. 
I'm Mrs. Topper. I'm looking for my husband, Mr. Topper. Oh, where's that friend of yours? The one that goes around sitting on people's laps. Well, I... Uh, She's been murdered, according to your husband. Don't change the subject. If you won't help us, we'll find him ourselves. Come along, Emily. I think we'll find him in the sitting room. The sitting room. Maybe she's still sitting on his lap. Sitting on his lap? Good heavens. You mean you've got a room just for that? Where is it? Uh, right this way. Come along, Emily. Come along. Here she comes. You've got to go. I don't trust you, Bunny. You tried to run out on me. How can I run out with her there? And how can I face her with you here? Well, sounds logical. Okay, here we go. <gasps> Come on, fella. Cosmo! Cosmo! Well, where is he? He was here a few minutes ago. Rama, what happened to him? I don't know, sir. But I'm positive he hasn't left the house. And he won't, not till I find him and give him a piece of my mind. Do you mind? Not at all. Where's the telephone? Right this way. Come along, Emily. Come along, Edward. Cosmo! 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 <laughs> Operator! Operator, I want to report a missing husband. Edward, you look for him down that way. It's awful dark down there. Darkness never hurt anyone. It ain't the darkness, Miss Topper. It's what's in it. Don't be silly. There's no difference between light and dark, except the lights are out. Run along. I'll go, but every hair in my coat is standing on end. Cosmo Topper? Well, what's he look like? Like a banker. Of course, that's because he is a banker. Well, can you describe him? Well, he wears a size 15 shirt with a 33 sleeve. A nine and a half sock liar, and he's slightly bald. Oh, yes, there's something else. Let me see, I paid the milkman. That luncheon's been changed from Thursday to Friday. Oh, yes, there's been a murder. Murder? Yes, murder. Capital M U R D E R. Murder. Trying to make these policemen understand something is harder than doing it yourself. Mr. Topper! Hey, Eddie, got a cigarette? Give me a match. Couldn't you stay the way you were? A negligee is hardly appropriate for solving crime. Yes, my name is Jimmy Ristic. I live in Tacoma, Washington. First time I'm watching your show. I'd like to see more of it. It looks good. Thank you.
portions of Creature Features are brought to you by the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. You like me. You really do like me. I won an Emmy. No, I did not win an Emmy, but Ronald Fields, grandson of W.C. Fields, won this Emmy. Thank you for bringing it. You know, I've never handled one before. It's like heavy and gleamy. <laughs> it's nice. This must have been a wonderful, wonderful, not surprise, but honor to receive something like this. It really was. It, it, you, it, it, was, it was a surprise. We were up against We Are the World, A Year of Giving. We were up against A, a Tribute to Spencer Tracy by Catherine oh, wow. Hepburn. And right. that, that everyone thought, well, there's, I'm a, such a long shot, I'll never win it. But we, we won. Well, it must have been a wonderful film. And oh. it's this one right here, right? Yeah. And yeah. this is called W.C. Fields, Straight Up. And you filmed this when? Oh, back in 86, 1986. 86. And... Um, wow. I was a producer and uh, and co-writer. Uh, they came to me to want the, the, to get the rights to use right. W.C. Fields, and right. I, I read the script. My brother said, "You got to read the script." My brother's the lawyers, and I read the script, and I said, "We can't do it. The script is terrible." Oh, really? Yeah, and I says, I, "Unless they have me as a writer and and a producer, I'm good not, for you." Yeah. So they, they reluctantly agreed. I fought tooth and nail with the producer, the executive right. producer and, right. and the director, because the director also wrote it. And I used their script. I said, fine, I'll use this as a, as a, as a, a template. Right. That, uh, you know, you got to accept these changes, you know. And I was very, very adamant about what it did. There was no storyline. I, I created the storyline. Who is this man really? You right. know? And they thought, well, documentaries, you don't have to have a storyline. Yeah, you do. Oh, makes it more interesting. Yeah. Anyway. yeah. So, uh, could this be seen like on Amazon or anything like that? You can get it at my website, RonaldJFields.com. RonaldJFields.com. It's appearing right here. <laughs> and uh, and so it's only available on physical media. Yes, I believe so. I don't know. I'm I'm a luddite when it comes to the internet, right. so I'm not right. sure if you can get it anywhere else. I know my my managers put it on my website. Who They also created my website. And so I... You I, just make films and write books. Yeah. You don't have to worry about these things. <laughs> I know. I don't worry about it. I don't even know how this works. Livingston does it all for me. Is that... He yeah. Just, no, he knows. That's, that's... And he could type like 7,000 words a minute. Jeez. So, you know, if I was a novelist, I would just be dictating to him all the time. I, I dictate to him anyways, but now I, I just know. dictate. So, um... Let's get back to the film, and when we come back, we're going to talk some more about you and what you've got coming up next, right? Okay, great. All right, off we go. Back to Topa Returns right about now. Come on, Toppy, we've got things to do. Cosmo! Gotta get out of here. I'm from headquarters. What's the trouble here? Trouble, sir? Now, don't stand there dumb. I got a phone call about a half an hour ago that there's been a murder. And maybe you did it. Cosmo! In here, quick! Cosmo! Cosmo! Oh, this must be the kitchen. Well, it's not the music room. Well, he's not here. Cosmo! Where on earth can he be? Cosmo! Cosmo! My, it's drafty in here. Oh, look at the chocolate cake. Emily makes some tea. Tea? Mm. Mm, of course, to go with our cake. But what about Mr. Topper? Emily, you know he never drinks tea. Well, yes, I know. What? Now then, did you see the face of the man who wore the cloak? No, it, it was covered up. 
Somebody's covering up a lot of things around here. Well, why don't you let her alone? She's nervous and upset. She is. How do you think I feel? A murder and no body. Didn't anybody see a body? Didn't you say the topper said he saw the body? Cut out the double talk. Who's topper? His man said he saw the body. Where is he? He's gone. He's gone? The body's gone. Say, what are you people trying to do to me? I'm sure, Sergeant, it's nothing but a tempest in a teapot. Miss Caddington had a note from the supposedly dead girl that will clear it all up. Where's the note? It's gone. The note's gone. The top is gone. The body's gone. Now look here. I don't have to come here to be made a fool of. Beg pardon, sir. But I believe Miss Carrington left the note upstairs. Jim, take the boys upstairs. Search everywhere. Don't miss anything. Tear it apart. Now, look here, Rebecca. Quit stalling. Where is this guy, Topper? I don't know. Well, what was he doing here in the first place? I don't know. Say, what do you think I am? I don't know. Who's this fresh guy? Oh, he's all right. He's a taxi driver. Yeah? Well, where's your taxi? Now, don't tell me that's disappeared, too. Where do you think it is? I'm not supposed to think. I'm from the city hall. Now, where was I? I don't know. Oh, Emily, this cake is simply delicious. Glad you like it. It's the best you've ever made. This is not our cake. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. Some cream, Emily, please. Cream. Yes, ma'am. out of a nice warm bed to come and sit in someone's icebox. I don't understand it. Oh, but I do understand it, don't I, Emily? I hope so. That screen came from in here. Hey, look. A prowler. Who are you? I'm Mrs. Topper. Who are you? Mrs. Topper? Where's your husband? In the icebox. Has he got the body with him? Certainly, under his overcoat. So you're Topper, huh? Would you mind coming out of cold storage? I will not. Say, what's the matter with him? Is he icebox crazy? He's suffering from hallucinations. Oh. You wouldn't by any chance be thinking you were a lamb chop. Now then, what do you mean by stealing in this house in the middle of the night? And what have you done with that girl you had on your lap? Girl on his lap, eh? Oh, -ho, a love triangle. Oh, do you really think so, officer? I get it. You sneaked into here to see some gal. Your wife followed. You had to get rid of the dame, so you knocked her off. Yes or no? I did not. Where's the body? I don't know. So you admit there is a body? Yes. I came over here to look for it. Well, how did you know it was here? She told me. She? Who's she? The dead girl. Well, now we get... Wait a minute. How can a dead person talk? I don't know, but this one does. Oh, I mean, I know you won't believe what I'm going to tell you, but... Well, we certainly... Where were you when the attempt was made on Miss Carrington's life? In the library, I think. I don't know. Did you or did you not try to stab this young lady? Oh, don't be ridiculous, officer. Cosmo wouldn't stab anybody. <laughs> he can't even carve a turkey. Now, listen, lady. Somebody kills a dame who talks after she's dead. And the body gets up and walks away. Somebody tried to whittle on this young lady. And I find him hiding in the icebox. Hey, Toppy, uh, take this. I don't want he gets his wish. You mean you're going to arrest him? Well, these ain't exactly charm bracelets, lady. Oh. He's got a gun. It's mine. Oh, Cosmo, give the man back his gun. <laughs> don't do that. Cosmo! <laughs> Call out somebody. Cosmo, you'll hurt yourself. Don't do that. Riley, you'll light up the sticks for this. Toppy. It might go off. Shouldn't do that. They'll go. Let go of me. Let go of me. You 
shouldn't have made me do that. Do you want to go to jail? No, but we can't go on like this. My wife, the police, what do you suppose they think? They think you're guilty of housebreaking and murder. Yes. Come on, let's find my body. No, because after we do find it, then I will be accused of murdering But you. I've got evidence to prove you're innocent. What evidence? This note. I was supposed to have written Anne, but didn't. Who did? I'll tell you when we find me. Come on. You certainly take the cake. I only took a small piece and a little cup of tea. That's no reason we should be locked up in here. Look, Mrs. Tupper, I'm not complaining, but I'm a personal maid and not Admiral Burst. Oh, Emily, I... shut up. We'll all get pneumonia. Can't you break down the door? It's as solid as a rock. Come in. Quiet. What's that funny noise? That's my teeth chattering. Well, why don't you put them in your pocket? Who has a screwdriver? You need a screwdriver to get them out? Oh. I've got a button hook. Where is it? Home on my dresser. Oh, my. Come on, everybody look around. There ought to be something here we can use. Come on. But, well, there's nothing in this joint but frozen tomatoes and dead chicken. Look, can you do something with that? Oh, I give up. May I suggest, sir, that you break the glass? What? Break the glass. Okay. Well, what good did that do? He means the glass in the door, dummy. Okay, but I think you're taking a lot of liberties. Look out. Oh. Wait a minute. I'll take charge of this. Riley, you take the upstairs and you take the downstairs. You take this. Personally, I think someone should call the police. Well, I'll take care of that. Check that for fingerprints.
You're going to stay right here until we get back. Yes, sir. But don't bet on it unless you get off a good odds. You're terrible at rowing the boat. Get up front and let me do the rowing. Here we go. Hold tight. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best. Such a disgusting hobby. Hurry! Help me up! Give me your hand. Why do it the hard way? Them's the orders I got from the boss, and them's the orders I'm passing on to you. I'm gonna do it my way, see? Can a guy ask questions? No! I say we dump her here, right where we dump Butch and Liver Lip. It's out ten miles and plenty deep. Oh, why not wrap her up in a concrete mud pack and drop her right here? The tide will take her out. That's the boss's orders, and don't argue with me. Go below and get that engine started. Okay. Gail, come here, quick. Here you are in here. Oh, dear, I look so uncomfortable. Stop the engines. We've got to get off. No, you lower the boat, and, and I'll take care of them. engine to run with the juice turned off. Give me that. Bond, get out of the way. I didn't.
If you'd asked me that a second later, you'd have been talking to yourself. Oh, the body. That does it. No, you don't. Trying to hide it, huh? No, no, I, I'm bringing it back. Bringing it back? Well, brother, you've got a lot of questions to answer. I got a hunch it ain't gonna be no quiz program. Joe, take him upstairs. All right. Everybody here? Yes, sir, all here. All right. Now, get this and get it straight. Nobody leaves this room unless I say so. And you, stop chewing that gum. Chewing? I ain't even breathing. Not you, her. I'm sorry, Miss Carrington. I know this is going to be a bit unpleasant for you, but would you mind stepping in the next room with me? Miss Carrington, I'm going to raise this sheet. See if you can identify this young lady. How long has she been living here? She came here tonight with Miss Carrington. Nice looking girl. Too bad she had to go so young. She's got awful big feet, though. Who did that? Who did that? Who hit me when I wasn't looking? Was you in that room just now? Not now, then, or ever. Well, don't tell me the joint's haunted. Now, look. I was standing in that room, minding my own business. Just as I say what big feet she's got, I get slapped in the kisser. <coughs> Who did that? Who went out that door? Nobody. Now, wait a minute. Doors just don't open and shut themselves. Yeah, but that one did. Hey, who went out that door? Your hoodie. Who? You feel better, dear? Well, she'd be all right if Charlie Chan had let her alone. Sergeant Roberts, I don't like to interfere, but is it necessary to subject my daughter to all this? She's terribly nervous. Won't you, won't you please let her go to her room? Nobody leaves this room, not even me. And that goes for the both of us. Big feet, huh? I'll match mine with his any day. Mind if I do. Innocent men stay home nights. They don't hide in ice boxes, and they don't take dead bodies on boat rides. Why did you kill her? I didn't. That's only one man's opinion. I can prove it. How? Leave me alone in that room for a minute. Oh, oh I'm not that dumb. Well, that's only one man's opinion, too. Officer, let him have his way. There are no windows in the trophy room. Any ice boxes? No. All right. I'll give you three minutes. If you're not back in this room with a 14 carat alibi, this lady's going to make one of the most charming widows I've ever met. Oh, well, thank you, officer. <laughs> Gail. Gail, where are you? Just getting another bottle, Toppy. Be right with you. And you and I'll have a little drink together. <laughs> Whoops, catch me. Gotcha. <laughs> Good boy, Toppy. Don't rub me. Now you stand up and behave yourself. Sweetie, let me mush your hair. Oh, stop it. Will you stop it? This is no time to be playful. 
Where's that note? What note? The proof you said you had. Tompey, I want to lie down. I'm sleepy. Uh, you can't get sleepy now. You got me into this, and you've got to get me out of it. Give me a hand. Oh, dear. Here, come on. Tompey, I feel so silly. Quiet. <laughs> Being a little boat in here. Try to walk straight. Oh, look at the pretty couch. There. Oh. Oh. This feels so good. Toppy, put my feet up. Oh. Gail, this is serious. Where is that note? I don't know. Try to think what you did with it, or I'll be arrested. Put a cold towel on my head, sweetie, and I'll try and think. I do, please. Just try to pull yourself together, will you? No, but I'll get you one. Well, that settles it. That guy's as nutty as a candy bar. Send for a straitjacket. Make it two. One for me. Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, I just love Eddie Rochester Anderson. He is probably the funniest part of this film. Yes, he's very Wonderful good. Man. He's very Wonderful good. Man. If you're just joining us, we are watching Topper Returns with Mr. Ronald Fields, grandson of W.C. Fields. And uh, you're going to show me wine. Yeah. <laughs> or I'm you going know, to... it's not too often we have wine. Or I'm going to wine. This is uh, the W.C. Fields wine. It's just coming out. Right. Uh, have some. <laughs> it's... I, I expect we're going to open this. Yes, we will. After and, the show. Time. This is wonderful. And it and has the same art as your DVD that we saw in the last Yes, segment. and that's by David Woodman, and uh, just a wonderful artist. That's wonderful. Now, did you actually crush the grapes with your own feet? No, I couldn't do that. My wife wouldn't mm. let me. All right. This is nice. Because she's going to drink it. And this is made in Amador County. It's a 2019 Sauvignon Blanc. You know... One thing that uh, confuses me about wine is, you know, everything they sell is beyond the stale date. You can't find any fresh wine around here. And, I, you know, I live in the wine country. You think I could find some fresh wine, and it's always like a year or two past the well, stale date. Well, we just date. brought this up for you, so I it should know. be. It's yeah. brand new. Even this one is 2019. And, and it has a WC quote. Is it 2019? It has a WC quote. Uh, I always cook with wine, and sometimes I add it to the food. That's a wonderful quote. Famous quote. And it's still cold, too. This is wonderful. And we took it out of your refrigerator. <laughs> wonderful. So um, the rest of your family, is anybody else doing what W.C. did? No. My, my oldest brother, W.C. Fields III, is uh, a lawyer. My second oldest is a lawyer. I went to law school for a month and said, I can't write like this. But I bet you could juggle. I can, actually. <laughs> you can juggle. See, either you juggle... Or you're a lawyer. Yeah, one of the that's two. right. Because <laughs> you can't do both. I, I, I think there's a law. I juggle the truth. Is what I, <laughs> well, that's what lawyers do. That's so. right. well, it's that in the family. Wonderful. That's wonderful. So what do you got ahead? New well, books? we can get this wine at Arenda, in a, at the Arenda Theater in Arenda, or on my website, ronaldjfields.com. So they sell wine. They distribute the wine through a theater. 
Yeah, right. That's At this it. point, we That's are going to go. We are going to go through with the internet. It's just that right. it's so brand new. We haven't set up all the intricacies for that. Right. So we we're do in have a, a TV show that I we're now promoting, which is called The Wizard of Inspiria, and it's if you think of The Wizard of Oz, it's kind of like The Wizard of Oz updated. It's 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 like a, how one of the most endearing movies in the world, and no one's kind of come up with the idea. What we're doing is, is uh, Dennis Lancaster who is a puppet maker. He's going to make puppets. It takes place in Inspiria. Right. It, it, it's uh, live action as well as uh, puppets. And the Wizard of Inspiria is W.C. Fields. Oh, wonderful. And so we're, we're going to do that. W.C. was asked to play the Wizard of Oz, the, the Wizard and the Wizard of Oz. He was? Yes. He should have. Yeah. No, I think he would have been better than, who was it, uh, that played? Uh, um, Oh, Frank Morgan? I think Frank Morgan. I almost said Frank Baum. He was the oh, one who wrote yeah, yeah. Wizard of Oz. Well, speaking of wizards, let's get back to Top of Returns. When we come back, uh, we're going to wrap up this film and find out more of what Ronald is doing next. So you guys stay with us. We'll be right back. Get up. Now, oh, where's that note? <laughs> What does this prove? I didn't write it. Who did? Lily and the housekeeper. Here's a sample of her handwriting. They're identical. Mm -hmm. Then she must be in on it. Mm -hmm. Sit down. You admit you wrote that letter, don't you? Yes. And this is the note you found in the murdered girl's room? Yes. Then how do you account for their both being in the same handwriting? Uh, I don't know. Listen, sister, it looks like you're all set for a first-degree murder rap. Of course, if you come clean, we could go a little easier on you. I wasn't alone in this. I wrote the note, but I didn't kill her. Who did? Come on, who did it? It... it was... Turn on the lights, quick. Come on now, who? There's a pickpocket in the joint. Whoever stole that witness, put her back. Jim, search the cellar, search the icebox, search the attic. Where's the attic? Search me. I've been in politics 10 years, and I've never seen anything as balled up as this is. Daryl, guard that front door. Don't let anybody in or out. What's down there? That's the kitchen. <laughs> if I find that dame in the icebox, I'll resign. And I'll drop dead. Oh, come, come now. Brace up, brace up. I'd appreciate it so much if you'd stay here with my daughter. I want to talk to Sergeant Roberts. That'll be a pleasure, sir. Come, come. Now I got... Oh, you a horrible man! I see no reason for us to stay in this awful house while you go around opening and shutting doors. Quiet, please. I will not be quiet. I'm so nervous I could scream. Stay here. That sounds like my wife. She was here a second ago. Well, what's happened now? Miss Carrington's disappeared. Well, I left her with him. Say, what is this, the fun house at the beach? Everybody that talks to you disappears. Now I'm talking to you. I suppose I'll turn up missing. That is the best suggestion you've made tonight. Well, that's all right. Don't you ever partner a fire plug. That's for you. Officer, 
I... I want to go home. I'll tell you when to go, and I'll tell you where to go. Sit down. <laughs> Disappeared. Disappeared? Entirely. Well, we've got to find her. The police won't let me out of their sight. Well, they can't stop me. Huh? Don't go out there. Mrs. Topper's just outside. I'll fix that. Huh? Well, where is she? Well, where, 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 where is who, dear? You know perfectly well who I mean. That. That girl. But there wasn't any. Oh, yes, there was. I heard you both in that room. Pardon me, Miss Topper, but it's getting kind of late. Uh, can't we settle this at home? Edward, don't interrupt. Yes, ma'am. Cosmo, I should think after 20 years of married life, you wouldn't try to deceive me. Why, I remember our honeymoon in Atlantic City. You promised me you'd never look at another woman. Mr. Keep away from me, or you'll be a coat. Please, I've had a frightful night. Boss, wait! Don't sit in that chair! Whatever you do, don't sit in that chair! Edward, will you stop interrupting? Why, well, you're all wet. Is it raining out? Oh, but you haven't been out. Can't be raining in. Well, if it has, it's all cleared up. Well, I can't stand much more. Oh, boss, that chair's deceptive, destructible, distrustworthy, and this is the voice of experience. What are you talking about? Boss, you sit in that chair and things happen. Quick! Oh, don't talk nonsense. It ain't nonsense. It's serious. Look, boss, I sat in that chair just like this. Cross my leg just like this. Lean back. Here I go again. Well, that's a silly way to leave the room. Why didn't he use the door? Mr. Topper! Well, as I was saying, I'll always stand by you no matter what happens. Yeah, yeah, just be quiet, will you, please? Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I won't say another word. one of these in our house for weekend guests. <laughs> really? Clara, for heaven's sake, get out of there. <gasps> okay, you take it down this way and you go upstairs. If you find anything, I'll be right here. Boy, what a night. 
I've never been on such a merry-go-round in my life! This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned. Hair styling for the show is provided by Restoration Hair in Santa Rosa. needed that one, right. Toppy. I just saw the murderer in the cellar. Who is he? I don't know. I couldn't see his face, but he was all muffled up in a big black cloak. Well, whoever he is, he was in that room when the housekeeper disappeared, because I found a contraption in the fireplace that operated the chair she was sitting on. Toppy. What? We've got to make him convict himself. Oh. You sit in that chair and tell them that you know who the murderer is. Me? Mm. Sitting in that chair? But I'll disappear, too. Oh, no. Not if you keep your eye on the fireplace. And the first one that makes a move toward it... That's the one we're after. Oh. Well. You're not afraid. What makes you think I'm not? I simply want to tell all I know. Well, that shouldn't take very long. Sit down. Now cut out the stalling. Who killed Gail Richards? Pick him out. In the first place, the one they wanted to kill was Miss Carrington. Well, never mind who they were after. Who done it? The murderer didn't know he'd killed the wrong girl. When he found out, he was panicky and hid the body. You see, Doctor, I did not have hallucinations. Very interesting. Say, so what are you watching that fireplace for? Who do you expect, Santa Claus? Come on, who done it? The housekeeper knew. She knew too much. But she wasn't the one. When she was about to confess, she disappeared from this very chair. And the person who caused her disappearance was standing right beside this fireplace when it happened. What do you say, Doc? He's looking right straight at you. The man's mad. I was nowhere near the fireplace when it happened. I was over there. Rama, you were standing here by the fireplace. You're mistaken, Dr. Jerris. I was standing by the library door. Well, now, wait a minute. Who was standing by the fireplace when the housekeeper disappeared? Why, Father, you were there. Why, yes. Come to think of it, I was. Mr. Carrington, would you mind sitting in that chair? Of course not. Mind that. Put your hands up too. And if you've got any sense, you won't move a muscle. You see? I told you it was him. Sergeant Roberts, it's been a pleasure to do business with a man of your intelligence.
Don't be a back seat driver. Sit down. Serves you right. Oh, I'd hate to be in your shoes. First murder and now reckless driving. The recording angel will certainly throw the book at you. Say, what are you doing here? Oh. Steady, old boy. A, a big fun. Now, why did you try to kill your daughter? Oh, don't be silly. I'm not Anne's father. Who are you? I'm Walter Harburg, Carrington's partner. Carrington was killed in a mine cave in. So that's it. Why, you ghost of a double crossing crook. Anne must know about this. Too late now. Oh, no. We're stuck here till she finds out. And when she knows the truth, I can go to heaven, and you can go to... Uh, give me a pencil, quick, and a piece of paper. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Take a letter. Dear Anne, I am not your father, period. If he was looking for an accident, he sure found it. This is going to cost him his driver's license. You know that, don't you? Come on. Here, Toppy. Give this to Anne. I'm sorry about your father, Miss Carrington. Wait a minute. He wasn't her father. Miss Carrington, this is for you. Well, what's this all about? Oh, here, read it. Or am I expecting too much? Where did you get this note? It flew into my hand. Notes that fly. Fathers that ain't fathers. Leaping chairs. Come on, let's get out of here before the trees start talking. Edward? Edward, where are you? Here I am. And here I go. Edward, come back here. Not me. From now on, I used to be your chauffeur. Hey, but you were to drive us home. Not in that car. Enough is enough, and that's what I've had a abundancy of. Very well. If that's the way you feel about it, Emily will drive us. And Cosmo, this time I'll sit on your lap. All right, darling. Emily, do you know how to drive? No, ma'am. <laughs> Isn't it exciting? Thanks, Eddie. You've been a great help. Sorry I had to dump you in the water, old boy.
puts an end to Topo Returns. The bad dad dies. Yes, he does at the yeah, end of the film. No, I was not expecting that, but she was. You know, this is one of her favorite films. Oh. She's, she's the one that suggested this film for tonight. So if you didn't like the movie, talk to her, not to me, <laughs> because she chose this one. And she doesn't, she doesn't do that too often. She does this quite often. But uh, no, she doesn't pick the movies too often because you only like the old stuff, don't you? Yeah. Now, most of the things that we show here are too new for her. So, uh, Ronald, what are you doing next? Well, we have a number of scripts that are going out to the studios now, but Hollywood's dead during, the, during uh, oh. this time. Hollywood is just not doing, they're not talking. It's like everything stopped. So, you know, we're waiting for things to start moving again. Right, right. So, but we have a number of scripts out there and being looked well, at. You know, I think it'd be a good time to learn how to run your own camera. I know. And, you know, I'd even get one of those types of cameras where you have to do this. Because you know, your grandfather used to be in front of those, right? Yes, absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Yeah. He did a number of silent films before he came to Hollywood. His, his first talking film was in 1930. Right. And then at that point, it was at Astoria Studios, which later became Paramount. Right. And then he moved to Hollywood to make his, uh, his career. And he had to really st start all over. He was with uh, Mac Sennett in the years ago, and he said, Mac, can I get a job here? Right. And that's how we started. How wonderful. How yeah. wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on our show. It's absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Vincent. Learning all about this. So your wealth of information on WC Fields, which you should be. <laughs> I, I would be ashamed if you were not, and of course you are. And uh, hopefully next time you're in town, you'll come see us again. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love to. It was a ball to be here. All right. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. As far that. as you guys go, uh, thank you for watching the show again. At least she thanks you for watching the show. I, I thank you as well. But when she thanks you, you do thank them, right? Yeah. She thanks the, you as well. So make sure you watch next week because it's going to be a different guest, different movie. I have no idea who or what, but it should be fun. <laughs> see you next time. So, uh, Ronald. You know, this whole thing with the wine that they made for W.C. Fields, would that company possibly be interested in making a creature feature wine? Yeah, but I don't think they would put you on the label, Vincent. <laughs>